All right, uh, in this example, we're going to look at some more integration of uh, sine and cosine. In part eight here, we have cosine to the fourth x uh, dx. So to integrate this, whenever you have even powers of sine and cosine only, so no odd powers floating around, we have to make use of these identities. So recall we can write cosine squared x as 1 plus cosine of 2x over 2, and we can write sine squared x as 1 minus cosine 2x over 2. So almost the same identities. Um, so I'm going to rewrite our cosine to the fourth power of x. Well, I can write that as cosine squared x times cosine squared x. And what I'm going to do is now start plugging in these identities. So uh, I've, I've seen these identities called power-reducing identities, right? Because you're kind of going from a cosine squared to a cosine to the first power. So we'll have 1 plus cosine of 2x over 2 times another 1 plus cosine of 2x over 2. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do is take the denominator. So 2 times 2 is 4. So we have 1 fourth. I'm going to pull that part uh, just out front. And then we would have 1 plus cosine 2x times 1 plus cosine 2x. We would have to distribute. So we would get 1 times 1. We would get a positive cosine 2x and then another positive cosine 2x. So that's 2 cosine of 2x. Um, and then on the outside, we'll get a cosine squared. We'll be left with a cosine squared of 2x. Now, what we have to do in this case, uh, notice we ended up with the squared term again. We'll basically have to go back and use our identity one more time. So I'm going to keep rewriting everything here. So we've got 1 fourth, the integral of 1 plus 2 cosine of 2x. And then I'm going to use our identity again. So Notice when we had just cosine squared x, uh, the thing that's inside the parentheses gets doubled. It says if you start with x, well now you got 2x. So if we start with 2x and we double that, we're going to end up with a cosine of 4x. So really we have 1 plus cosine of 4x. Again, it's still over, uh, still over 2. The only thing that changes is what's inside the... Uh, the parentheses. So 1 cosine, one plus cosine of 4x over 2, all of that uh, we're integrating with respect to x. So now, still cleaning it up, so this is 1 fourth, uh, we've got 1 plus 2 cosine of 2x. Uh, if we break this up, we would have a plus 1 half, and then we would have plus 1 half cosine of 4x. Okay, so I'm going to keep simplifying here. Um, we've got 1 plus a half, which is going to be 3 over 2, plus 2 cosine of 2x, plus 1 half cosine of 4x. And now we're in a good uh, position. We can actually integrate all of these functions. So, uh, to integrate these, uh, technically to integrate cosine of uh, 2x, we would do a u substitution. So technically you would break all these up. Um, to do cosine of 2x, we would do a u substitution. We would let u equals 2x. Uh, to integrate the cosine of 4x, again, we would do a u sub and let u equal uh, 4x. But we've kind of seen the shortcut for these in a different example. Um, the antiderivative of 3 over 2, that's not a problem. That's 3 over 2x. The 2 comes along. Uh, we've kind of see, seen the shortcut for these. Uh, so if you integrate sine, or excuse me, if you integrate cosine, we get sine of 2x. And then whatever the coefficient is, that's what we also have to divide by. And again, if you do a u substitution, you'll see that's what happens. Uh, and again, we did an example kind of pointing that out. The antiderivative of cosine is sine. Well, it will be of 4x. And then we again, we divide by the number, uh, the coefficient on the x, which will be a 4. And then we've got our plus c left over. So again, I think we can just simplify things a little bit. The 2 and the 2 will cancel. Uh, we could always distribute the 1 fourth. I'm not going to. 
Um, so I'm just going to leave it out front. We've got 1 fourth times 3 over 2x. We would have sine of 2x. And then we would have a 1 eighth sine of 4x plus c. And we've now got our antiderivative.